Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and massive congratulations are in order to Virgin Orbit, who, in a matter of speaking, lost their orbital virginity on Sunday when they successfully deployed their Launcher 1 rocket. It lit its engine and it successfully placed the payloads into orbit, making them the newest addition to a growing list of privately developed launch vehicles. This was only their second launch attempt, and it was actually carrying a live payload, about 10 CubeSats for NASA's ELANA program, the Educational Launch of Nanosatellites. And that demonstrated that they had a lot of confidence that they had solved the problems in their launch vehicle. The first attempt to launch this, or last year, the vehicle dropped from the aircraft, it lit its engines, and then after a couple of seconds, the engine cut out. And this was traced to a breakage in the high-pressure oxygen line, which all resulted in the engine getting starved. And, of course, the flight termination system was activated, resulting in a fireball that descended into the Pacific. But all that is a distant memory now. Virgin Orbit have joined a very short list of companies that have developed their own private rockets. SpaceX, Rocket Lab, and Orbital ATK, which is now part of Northrop Grumman. But while they were confident enough to put a customer's payload on it, they weren't comfortable enough to actually share a live stream publicly. We did get the whole thing live tweeted and we got all the details. There was some concern at one point as to whether the uh, satellites had actually separated from the stage, but eventually we got notification that all the satellites were in orbit, in the correct orbit, and flying free. But as with many of these things, there were actually internal streams and a lot of stuff leaked from these. And you can actually see the entire launch sequence online. It's very well produced, uh, but I want to focus on their official footage first. Virgin Orbit started out as a spin-off from Virgin Galactic. They wanted to launch rockets using the White Knight carrier aircraft, but their rocket got bigger and instead they asked their uh, investor, founder, Richard Branson, hey, you run an airline, could we borrow one of your old 747s? And so they got this magnificent creature called Cosmic Girl. This uh, plane first flew in uh, September of 2001. It flew on transatlantic routes. I think I actually flew on it at one point, but it carries the 30-ton rocket uh, underneath the left wing. The reason is that there's actually a hard point there where they can carry a spare engine if they need to move the engines between the airports. And so on there, there's a quick release system which includes all the umbilicals to keep the rocket ready for flight. It's a liquid propellant rocket, so I imagine they must top up the propellant. When they get to the launch site, they pull up into a steep climb and drop the rocket, and the plane immediately banks over to the right to clear the area. As the rocket drops, it initially fires a small set of thrusters called propellant settling thrusters that make sure the engine can light cleanly. And then the main Newton 3 engines light up and they generate about 35 tons of thrust. Now this all happens miles off the coast to the west of Los Angeles. And for the first launch it was too cloudy, but on Sunday it was wonderfully clear. And there's this magnificent cell phone video showing uh, the actual launch. And here you can see the trails of the two vehicles. And if you look, you can see the inverted U-shape. That's the trajectory that the 747 followed. But you can now see the rocket heading off to the left. Now initially, and by the time it's lit its engine, the rocket is basically going horizontally, so it needs to pick up vertical speed, and it does this by assuming a high angle of attack. So it's pointing upwards, but the engine thrust isn't what's giving it the vertical speed. Most of the initial lift comes from the aerodynamic forces as it slides sideways through the atmosphere at high angle of attack. Like a wing, it doesn't have a wing. Pegasus was another air-launched vehicle, and it had a wing. This is entirely a regular-shaped rocket with fins. So now that let's watch this again. Watch for the initial propellant settling thrusters and then the main engine, and then watch the engine gimbling to actually give it the high angle of attack. So propellant settling, main engine, and then the engine gimbals, and the thing takes an angle. And so for the first section of flight, this rocket is essentially doing an epic power slide through the atmosphere, just trying to eke out a little bit of lift so it can start heading upwards into the stratosphere and onwards into space. 
From the onboard camera, you can see that rocket exhaust pointed upwards to get the torque. Once they get enough vertical speed, they can just fire the engine straight. And of course, then you have Miko, stage separation and the ignition of the second stage Newton 4 engine, which will power the vehicle into orbit. Now for this demo mission, the payload was quite light and the orbit was quite high. So they put it into an eccentric orbit and then had an engine relight to circularize it into a 500 kilometer 60 degree orbit. So it was a success all round. And of course, the reusable zero with stage, better known as Cosmic Girl, head back to Mojave for future flights. I do want to take a moment to look at a few things from the the leaked stream, which was you know, pretty well put together by the looks of things. Obviously, we get the launch and you see, you know, the whole ignition sequence and the assumption of the high angle of attack mode. But soon after this engine lights, you start to get this roll oscillation. And I'm going to say, if I was one of the people working on the rocket, I would have been terrified by this. I would have thought that we were about to lose the vehicle. But the control systems kept the thing under control and I think just really what this is is it was the first time they had entered this flight region in testing and when you're performing a high angle of attack maneuver at transonic speeds it's very difficult to model and I'm not surprised that this was one of the regions they might have run into trouble and they successfully negotiated and now they have the data they know for future reference so I don't see this being a future problem. The other fascinating thing is this display they popped up on the left, which tells us all sorts of cool things that we speculated on. If you look on the left towards the mid to lower region, there's a section that says gimbal and turbine roll control. This is how they're controlling the launch vehicle during the initial atmospheric ascent. You see like a blue polygon with a purple spot inside it. That's showing the gimbal position. And you'll notice it has a big chunk out at the bottom. It points further down because I think they need more authority to be able to pitch up than they do in any other axis. So they have extra room in their gimballing. Underneath that, they have an indicator for turbine roll control. I think the turbo pump exhausts are used as uh, little thrusters to control, to provide roll capability. So we've seen pictures like this showing the rocket nozzle and the two turbine exhausts underneath. And there was speculation that this was how they got roll control, but it hadn't really been confirmed to many people's satisfaction. But I think this is pretty conclusive at this point that these are definitely being used to provide some sort of thrust vectoring. Of course, we get much better views of this on the ground on test stands. This is a you know, short test to show the controls. And the turbine exhausts are the ones coming underneath. And you see that has a much smokier and darker flame because these are exhaust gases that have to drive turbines. And so they're fuel rich and they're cooler. But you can also see the main engine running through all its gimballing to demonstrate, you know, so they can demonstrate that it was able to control a rocket in these extreme conditions. If you do watch it, realize that there is a significant lag between the uh, telemetry and the video on the right. I've gone and fixed it here using the magic of compositing. So we get to see the whole thing coming apart and the, uh, you know, the display actually matching that in sequence. There's uh, one other thing that I sort of noticed, and that is the gimbal for the second stage isn't centered. So I'm wondering if the payload was asymmetric or something, and they needed to have this thing firing off axis to keep it stable. So after this successful test, hopefully they will be able to start selling this on to customers. I believe they already have like three launches for the military signed up under their Vox uh, subsidiary. But, uh, you know, I think Launcher 1 offers a few advantages over other alternatives depending upon your mission requirements. They have slightly more mass than capability than Rocket Lab. And while Rocket Lab have made a lot of gains by using their Photon third stage, Virgin Orbital are also planning on orbit, uh, offering a third stage for interplanetary missions. And being able to operate from an airport gives them more flexibility. It is planned that they will be able to launch satellites from the UK uh, at some point in the future. There's a planned facility in Cornwall which will support this. So congratulations to everyone involved, the designers, the engineers, the pilots, and of course, the awesome Cosmic Girl. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.